Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with exercise 3C of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page number 81, and the question I'm going to do is number 5. It reads, a particle is projected with speed 10 meters per second from the foot of an inclined plane, which makes an angle 30 degrees with the horizontal. Find the range in the case where alpha, the angle uh, which the line of projection makes with the horizontal, is both 75 and then separately when it is 60 degrees. So of course the first thing we need to do here is to sketch the motion. So I'm going to draw my y-axis and my x-axis making my xy or Cartesian plane. Then I'm going to draw the incline in a separate color. You know the incline is at 30 degrees like so. I'm going to call the incline my new uh, x prime axis and perpendicular to that I'm going to draw my y prime axis. So what I've done here is I've rotated my x y plane anti-clockwise 30 degrees. That's very straightforward, we've done that in the past. The next thing we need to do is draw our velocity vector. Like so. And we know of course that u is equal to u sub x i hat plus u sub y j hat. Whereby we define our unit vectors like so. We define them parallel to the i hat and uh, or the x prime and y prime axes. So we need to resolve the unit the, the vector u into its component unit vectors. And how we do that is by drawing the two vectors which when added together to create that vector. And they must be parallel to the x prime and y prime plane. So draw it there and there. So this vector here is u sub x. This vector here is u sub y. And it's going to leave it at alpha for the moment. So it's going to be this is going to be u cosine of alpha. And this is going to be u sine of alpha. This will be j hat, and this will be i hat. And that's the general case. So the next thing we need to do is draw our u vast and put in the information that we know. The x prime, y prime. Like so. Yeah, that's okay there. So we know that u sub x is equal to u cosine alpha and u sub y is equal to u sine alpha. Like so. So we can get rid of everything regarding the velocity vectors because we've now sorted that out. Alright, so I'll get rid of all this. Just bear with me a moment now and I get rid of it all. So the next thing we need to do is resolve our gravity vector. So the gravity vector acts in the negative y direction, like so. And in order to resolve this, we need to put it into the x prime and y prime plane. So we need to draw the two vectors, which when added together, create that vector. So first of all, we draw a line parallel to the x prime, wrong, to the right y prime plane, like so. And when we can, draw one parallel to the x prime. They're at right angles. This up here is g sub y, and this one down here is g sub x. Their directions, of course, must be like this in order for them to add together and create g. So g sub x, we'll have to talk about what g sub x is going to be now. Remember, when two angles bisect each other at right angles, like this one here does, then the, the their angles are equal. So in this case, we have 30 degrees up here. So g sub x is equal to g times the sine of 30 i hat, and this is g times the cos of 30 j hat. The next thing we need to do is take into account their, their signs. So we want, of course, their signs to be correct. Now if you look, the i hat unit vector is in the opposite direction from the, uh, oh sorry, the g sub x is the opposite direction from the i hat and g sub y is in the opposite direction from j hat. So they should be negative. But if we plug in the fact that g is equal to minus 9.8, we will get that. So we're good so far. So plug these values in here, we get g times the cosine of 30 and g times the sine of 30 like so. The next thing we need to do is get the, the v, then we'll say the, uh, the, these vectors here, but to be honest we're not going to use them so we're not going to use, I'm not going to actually work them out. The time for both is going to be t. The next thing you need to do is get s sub x and s sub y. So we're going to use the fact that s is equal to ut plus a half at squared. So here it's going to be u cos alpha t plus 
g over 2 sine of 30 t squared and here it's going to be u sine 30 t plus g over 2 cos 30 t squared now when is this, when is the particle at its maximum range it's when it's after hitting the ground again so s sub y the distance above the x prime axis in this case is equal to zero so let's just do that so we'll say I'll do it in green so we'll say that s sub y is equal to zero is equal to u sine of 30 t minus 4.9 which is g over 2 cos of 30 t squared sine of alpha that's not 30 that's sine of alpha like so. Alright, and this of course is the polynomial of degree 2 which is a quadratic and a quadratic of degree 2 can be solved usually by the formula minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a but because we don't have a, a t to the 0 term here we don't need to do that and we can just plug out t or pull out t should I say. So well, I'm just going to look at my tables here I think it's page 13 yeah so on page 13 it says that the uh, cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2. So I can change this here to root 3 over 2. Over 2. I'm moving this t squared here. So I just need to rearrange this. So I'm going to pull out t. So we're going to get t times u sine alpha minus 4.9 times root 3 over 2. is that there so that is 4.24 and we know that's equal to 0 so two things multiplied together to make 0 one of them must be 0 so in this case this t here is 0 and if we rearrange this that's not a square excuse me if we rearrange this we'll get that t is equal to u sine alpha over 4.24 now is that correct? well it is because if you think about it at t is equal to 0 the particle hasn't actually left the ground yet so that's correct so we must this 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 expression here must be the expression for when the particle is at its maximum range so I'm just going to note that here uh, u sine alpha over 4.24 u sine alpha over 4.24 like so. So I'm just going to rub out the things that I don't need. What we're going to do is we're going to get a general expression for the maximum range and by doing this we're going to plug in the value for t into the maximum range here. So s sub x is equal to u cosine alpha like so times t and t is u times the sine of alpha over 4.24. g over 2 is minus 4.9 now the sine of 30, if you look in your tables on page 13, is a half, so there's the half there, times t squared. So we need to square this, so we get u squared sine squared alpha over 4.24 to be squared. So let's square that there one second. So 4.24 to be squared is equal to 18, like so. And this is the general expression for the... Uh, for, for the maximum range. So I'm just going to get rid of the, the we'll say the, the decimals. So we know of course that u is equal to 10, we're given that in the question. So this becomes a square, this becomes 100. So well, 100 divided by 4.24 is equal to 23.58, say 23.6 cos alpha sine alpha and then we have 100 multiplied by 4.9 divided by 2 divided by 18 and we get 13.61 sine squared alpha and that is the final expression we need for the maximum range s sub x max alright so the thing is now we need to just plug in our final figures so we know of course that the angles of projection were 75 degrees and 60 degrees against the horizontal. Now that's important. 
So if we go back to our, our horizontal over here, I'll just get rid of the things that just clutter up our diagram. All right. So in this case, we'll say u is this direction, and we call it this alpha. So alpha is against the uh, is against the x prime axis, but we're given alpha against the horizontal. So we need to take, of course, 40 or 30 degrees away away from both answers. So 75 becomes um, sorry 45, and 60 becomes 30 degrees. So instead of plugging in these two values, we plug in both 45 degrees and 30 degrees. So let's just go down here. So we have 45 degrees and 30 degrees. So let's just plug them in. So we get 23.6 multiplied by the cos of, let's we'll say, 45 first, multiplied by the sine 45, giving an answer of 11.8 minus now, sine squared alpha, so I'm going to say sine of 45, I'm going to square that, and multiply that by point, or by 13.61, getting an answer of 6.8. And that's equal to, the answer of course then becomes 4.995, or let's say 5 meters. All right? So the next thing to do is check that answer in the back of the book. So we're on exercise 3C, question 5. 3C, question 5. It is 5, isn't it? They're after giving it in a bit of a mad way here. 3C, question 5. Right, okay, the answer for this one I'm given in the book is as follows. This is kind of mad altogether. So it's 200 root 3 minus 1 over 3g. So look, what I'll do is I'll, I'll see if this is correct, and if it is, then I'll leave you do the, uh, the, the 30 degrees on its own. So it's 200 multiplied by the square root of 3 minus 1 all divided by 3, all divided by 9.81, 4.97, and I got 5 meters. So we got the, the same answer here. So if you do, if you plug in 30 degrees into this expression, you'll get the, the, the correct answer then for, for, that, uh, for that angle as well. The only difference, of course, is the book uses thirds, which is a bit odd. Or not odd, excuse me, but rather awkward. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.